Welcome back to Life in Room 27. My name is Miss Robinson and I'm back with another math tutorial video for you guys. So today we're going to be looking at lesson 4.2 and in lesson 4.2 the essential question is how can you use a model to multiply a decimal by a whole number? So today we're going to be looking at two ways to do that. The first way I'm going to show you is going to involve you using a base 10 block model. So we're going to be looking at a um, whole piece and breaking that down to tenths and hundredths. The second strategy or the second model we're going to use is how to use a quick picture when multiplying a decimal by a whole number. Now both of these things are models we should be familiar with because we've used them in previous chapters. Today we're just going to look at using them when we're trying to multiply. So I'm going to flip the camera around. I'm going to set up two examples for you and then I will have some closing statements. So I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so in today's lesson, we're going to be multiplying a whole number times a decimal and we're going to be using two different strategies. The first strategy that we're going to use is going to be referred to as finding a decimal model or using a decimal model. So what I've drawn here for you guys is a decimal model. This is basically going to be a whole block if we were dealing with base 10 pieces. And you're either looking at this as one whole if you're looking at the whole square. If you're looking at the columns in this one whole, those are tenths, remember. And the little squares in each represent hundredths. So in this particular example, you're asked to multiply four times 17 hundredths. So in your model, that means you are going to color 17 of the small boxes because each small box represents a hundredth. You're going to color 17 of them four times. So in class today, we talked about every group that you color, you want it to be a different color so that you can tell one group from the next when you're counting how many you have in total. So this first section of red is my first group of 17 hundredths. This first section in green is my second group of 17 hundredths because I've colored in 17 of these squares. This second red section here is my third group of 17 hundredths and this second group of green here is my second group or my fourth group of hundredths. So the only reason these are different colors is just so that visually, when I need to interpret this as an answer, I can see how many boxes in total I've colored and I can confirm that I've done that four times. Here's group one, group two, group three, group four. Once you've colored in the correct number of boxes based on your multiplication problem, this is telling you how many times to create those groups and this is telling me or telling you the value of those groups. So I need four groups of 17 hundredths, which is what's here. So once you've colored it in, you're going to interpret it or find the answer or the product to that problem. Now, it would not be efficient for you to count each of these boxes one at a time. You want to remind yourself that there are 10 tenths, or I'm sorry, there are 10 hundredths and one tenth. So instead of counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, all the way until I'm done counting the colored squares, I'm gonna tell myself, well, I know that one of these full columns colored is 10, a second full column is 20, this would be 30, this would be 40, this would be 50, this would be 60. So now that made that much simpler. So I know I have 60 here. This column is not fully colored, so I do need to count these individually. So this was 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68. So this model shows me that 4 times 17 hundredths is going to be not 68 holes because remember these are hundredth pieces. So your answer is going to be 68 hundredths. So it's going to be 0 and 68 hundredths. So that is how you would do those problems. Luckily, you guys won't have to draw it out because it's already drawn out for you in your math book for homework, but you do want to make sure that you're coloring them in different colors so that you can see that you have the correct number of groups and make sure don't waste your time counting one square at a time. If you can count them as groups of 10, make sure you do that. So that is the first strategy. The second strategy is going to involve a quick picture. So I'm going to remove all this from my board and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you how you would multiply a decimal by a whole number using a quick picture. So I'll be right back. The next strategy that we're going to use is going to be involving drawing a quick picture. So in this example, we're going to multiply three 
times zero and forty six hundredths and we're going to use a quick picture to do that quick pictures we're familiar with because in chapter three we were adding and subtracting with quick pictures and today the only difference is going to be that we are going to be multiplying using quick pictures so the first thing that you want to recognize is well how many times am i going to be drawing out forty six hundredths so this is telling me three times i'm going to draw out forty six hundredths so i'm going to start by doing that so Here's my first group of 46 hundredths. One, two, three, four, because there's four tenths in 46 hundredths. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, because there's six hundredths in 46 hundredths. So that's group one. Now I'm gonna create group two, same thing, 46 hundredths. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's two groups of 46 hundredths, but I need three groups of 46 hundredths because my problem is three times 46 hundredths. So I'm gonna make one more group. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. So here I have three groups of 46 hundredths. Remember, multiplication is just repeated addition as long as you're adding the same thing. Now with our quick picture, we still need to make sure that we remember you cannot have more than nine of any type of pieces. So I'm looking at this and I definitely know that I have more than nine hundredths. So the first thing I'm gonna look at is my hundredths and I'm gonna see if I can regroup those into tenths. So I know that this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm going to regroup that as one new tenth, and I'm going to draw that new tenth in a separate color. Then I'm going to check to see, do I still have too many hundredths? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Not enough for me to regroup, so I'm going to leave those hundredths alone. Now I'm going to check my tenths to see if I have more than nine tenths. And I know that if I have more than nine tenths, I have to regroup my tenths into a whole. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So definitely too many. So I'm gonna take out 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Those will be regrouped as one whole. And I'll draw that down here in red so that you know that that is a regrouped one. Now, just looking at it, I know I only have two tenths left. That is not enough for me to regroup any further. So now I just need to interpret what is this saying? What is this saying is the product of three and 46 hundredths? So I'm looking at my pieces. I have one whole. I have one, two, three tenths. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight hundredths. So that is telling me that my answer to three times 46 hundredths is one and 38 hundredths. So as you can see, they're pretty simple strategies. This one should be a little familiar to you because we've used quick pictures before in chapter three. The only difference now is you're using it for the purpose of multiplication. But if you really think about it, we know that multiplication is just repeated addition. So this is telling you how many times to draw that value out. And this is telling you what exactly are you drawing and how many times are you drawing it. So I'm going to flip the camera around. I'm going to come back with some closing thoughts and then we will be on our way. All right, so those were your examples. So when you do your homework tonight, when it shows you the base 10 block model or the flat that is representing one hole that is filled with 100 pieces or 10th pieces, depending on how you're looking at it, know that you have to multiply your decimal by your whole number using that model. You don't have any other option. So I believe the first three problems on your math homework tonight is going to ask you to do that. And then the rest of the problems, if it says multiply using a quick picture, you must use a quick picture because again, you 
you need to make sure that you're able to interpret a math problem that involves decimals and whole numbers with a quick picture or be able to create one if you're asked to do that on a quiz or a test. So as always, I hope those examples in this video is helpful for you guys. If you like the video, why don't you guys give it a thumbs up and I will know that you guys find this helpful. If you're a parent, you can give it a thumbs up also and that encourages me to keep making these videos. So until next time, have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye everybody.